Welcome to the Blocks Blender Overview. My name is Jonathan Abenheim, and this is officially the first Blender video on my channel. So a very special shout out to all of the wonderful fans out there in the Blender community who showed interest in a Blender version of these rigs. In this video, I'll be covering everything you need to know about the Blocks Blender Edition, of course, so that you can start creating super fun animations. They are designed, as you know, to be super easy to use and a lot of fun to custom. Customize. The blocks have a very minimalistic controller setup so that within minutes you'll have mastered all 12 of the rigs. They also happen to have the exact same rig setup so going from one rig to another could not be any easier. In this overview I'll be using the Jordan rig to demo all of the blocks key features and in the customization chapter I'll be showing you a few custom Jordan rigs and I'll be ending this overview with a really fun Jordan transformation into a robot so make sure you stick around until the end we're gonna have a little fun here. This video is split up into multiple chapters. You can find all of the topics I'll be covering right below in the description box of this video. And with that said, let's begin with a general overview of Rigify. The blocks were rigged using Blender's very popular built-in add-on called Rigify. All the essential tools that you need to animate built right into the rig, easily accessible through a really clean and simple side panel menu. I'll be covering all of this and more in upcoming chapters, so let's begin this Blender overview starting with a look at the side panel menu that houses all of the settings and controls for the rigs. All of the blocks, controls, and features can be found on this side panel menu. Starting up top, we have our standard transforms with location and rotation. Right below is the rotation order, which is currently set to XYZ Euler or Euler, depending on who you're speaking with. Now, to be honest, it does look like a Euler to me, but hey, I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have our standard scaling values, and below that, we have rig main properties. Now, this menu is contextual and will display different options based on the controller you have selected. I'll be covering this in more detail in upcoming chapters. Next, we find the rig layers, and here you'll find all of the character's controls that you can toggle on and off with a simple click. Blue means it's turned on, and gray means it's turned off. You can also click drag to toggle more than one button if single clicking is too much for you. <laughs> Thanks for the attention to Detail Blender. We do appreciate these little things. All 12 of the blocks share the same rig layer setup, making it very easy for you to remember when switching between characters. And that covers everything you need to know about the side panel menu. With the head controller selected, we can see two options in the rig main properties, neck follow and head follow. They are currently set to zero, so as I rotate the torso control, you can see they are in world space. Now, let's set both to a value of one, and now if I rotate, they will both follow the torso. So remember, zero equals world space, and one equals torso, and that covers the head and neck. With the upper arm controller selected under rig main properties, you'll see two sliders, FK limb follow and IKFK switch. So for the FK limb follow, one equals world space and zero equals torso. We're currently set to one. So if I rotate my torso, my arm stays in world space, as you can see. And if I change the slider to zero, it will now follow my torso. For the IKFK switch slider, one equals FK, which is what we're currently in, and zero equals IK. So let me switch over to IK by moving it to zero, and I'm gonna toggle on my IK controller button in my rig layers right below. And now if I move my hand control, we are now in IK. All right, let's take a look at the FK IK snap options. Very useful if you want to switch between FK or IK and maintain your pose. Now, to make things easier, just pay attention to the first two letters on the button so that you can remember which one to click. As an example, if I pose my FK arm just like this and I want to switch it over to IK, first I'm going to turn on my IK arm controller in the rig layer so that I can see the controller, of course. Next, I'm already in FK, so I want to click on the button that reads IK. Remember, first two letters to make it easier to remember. Next, I'm going to slide my switch over to zero and we are in IK. So I'm going to keep my FK controllers visible and now we're going to go from IK to FK. So let me repose this IK arm just like this. So now I'm in IK. I want to switch over to FK. I will click the button that reads FK, first two letters, and I'm going to move my slider over to 1.0 and now we are in FK. 
4K. And that is how these snap options work. Right below the snap options, we find two more options called action and clear. Now, let's say your arm animation has a lot of keyframes. And for this example, I'm just going to key in three poses to illustrate how this works. I'll start with this pose on frame number one. I'm going to go to frame 15 and do something like this. And then I'm just going to copy over my first frame to frame 30. So I have my three poses. Now I want to switch my arm from FK to IK, but I want the switch to happen on all of the frames on my timeline all at once. This is where the action feature comes in super handy. First, let's unhide the IK arm controller right here. Under the IK option, I'm gonna click on the action button. You'll get prompted with a message saying, apply snap IK FK to keyframes. I'm gonna click this button to confirm, and then I will adjust my slider to zero to go into IK mode. And now our arm is in IK, and Rigify just matched all of our poses for us. How cool is that? Now, let's keep the scene clean. Let's say you wanna delete all of the FK keys and reset the transform, since we're not gonna be using those keys anymore. You simply click the clear button under the FK option, and there you go it removed all of the keys and reset the transform this is such a super cool feature to have built right into the rig and that is how the action and clear works next we have the ik stretch and it's currently set to 1.0 which means it is turned on so if i grab my arm and i translate it down you can see the squash and stretch is working to turn it off you guessed it you simply move the slider to zero and it is turned off and that is how the ik stretch works The next three options we find are the toggle pole IK parent and pole parent. Starting with the toggle pole, which is currently set to one, you get the traditional pole vector behind the arm, which is currently what you're seeing. If I select this controller and I move it, it controls the elbow rotation. Now, if I press the toggle pole, it sets the value to zero. Your pole vector disappears and nothing else is visible. And that is intentional by design because you'll have to go to your layers in the object properties tab and turn on the visibility. Just remember to hold the shift and click at the same time to enable it. Otherwise, if you single click it, it will turn it on and turn everything else off. You will see an arrow appear on the upper arm, and this arrow lets you rotate the arm to control your elbow rotation. Let's turn off the visibility for now and click toggle pull to bring back our pull vector controller. Now to the right of the toggle pull value, you'll see a little arrow and to demo this feature, I'm going to pose my arm just like this with a little bend. I'm going to key in three keys to animate the elbow, something really, really simple. So we have three keys on frame one, 15 and 30. Now let's say you want to switch over from the traditional pull vector to the two arrows and you want to maintain your animation. You simply click this little arrow and you'll get prompted apply toggle pull to keyframes you click ok and your animation will be copied over from the pull vector to the two arrows and you can continue to animate now if you want to switch back to the pull vector you click the same button you'll see a check on the use pull vector you click ok and there you go it's also worth noting that there's a lot of complex math involved that Rigify is doing under the hood to make this feature possible. Keep that in mind because this was a very simple demo on a very simple character to show you how it works. I strongly recommend you choose one or the other, say you animate with the arrows or you animate with the pull vector when you start your animation and avoid switching during your animation, which may cause the results to vary. All right, so you now know how the toggle pull option works. Now I'm going to show you how both the IK parent and pull parent options work, as well as both the apply switch parent to keyframes options. Now, I went ahead, I created a very simple animation for this demo, but before I show you the animation, let's take a quick look at the different space options available for the hand and elbow pull vector. IK parent corresponds to the hand control. So if I click it, I'll get a bunch of options that I can switch spaces to. None equals zero, and then it goes from one through six. And that is what these values on the side correspond to. Same for the elbow. If I click it, I'll get one more additional space switch for a total of seven. So they're currently both set to a value of two. So if I click on the list, two corresponds to the torso, zero, one, two. Now, both my arms and elbow pull vectors are animated on three keyframes, one frame 15 and frame 30. Now, let me press play to give you some context on this animation. Jordan is skydiving and his arms are flailing in the air. So currently my torso control is the parent. So if I move my 
torso, the arms will follow. Now let's say that you decided in the middle of your animation that you prefer the chest controller to drive your arms. So currently, if I move the chest, you'll see that the arms are not following. This is where Rigify really shines with an amazing feature built right into the rig, allowing you to space switch to solve this problem. So to the right side of the values, you can click on the apply switch parent, choose the new parent that you'd like. Let's select the chest. I'm going to click OK. I'll do the same thing for my elbow and choose the chest. Click OK. And now if I move my chest control, it is now driving the arm. Now I just need to repeat this process for the other arm and there you have it. If you've ever had to space switch and keep your keyframes intact, you can truly appreciate how awesome this feature is. Normally you'll find this type of tool on a feature production rig. So it's super badass to see Rigify implementing this feature right into its rig. Thank you very much, Rigify. All right, let's have a look at the torso controls. You have both IK and FK controllers that you can toggle between depending on your animation style. Now, to make it easier for you to understand which controller moves what, let's look at the torso as four blocks. The biggest block is, of course, the chest. We'll call this block number one. Right below it, block number two. Next one is, of course, block number three. And you guessed it, the hips will be block number four. Now, if I rotate my IK chest control, that's the yellow rectangle, this will affect blocks number one and two. Now, if I wanna affect block number three, I can translate my IK controller just like this, and now it will affect blocks number one, two, and three. Now, let's jump down to the IK hips controller, that's the smaller yellow rectangle. This one will affect blocks number three and four, as you can see here while I'm rotating. The bigger rectangle, of course, that's your torso control and it does exactly what you would imagine. Now, let's move back up top to the first FK controller and this one affects block number one. Second FK controller will affect blocks number one and two. The third FK control affects blocks number three and four. And the last FK controller, that's the one around the hips, affects the hips only, and that is block number four. And that covers everything you need to know about the torso controls. All right, let's have a look at the legs. Now you'll find that the settings are identical to the arms. That said, let's do a brief recap as a refresher. IKFK slider is used to switch your legs between FK and IK. Zero equals IK, that's to the left. And if you slide over to the right, one equals FK. The snap feature allows you to switch between your FK and IK and maintain that pose. Now, we're currently in IK, so if I pose my leg just like this, next I click on the FK snap, then I move my IKFK slider to one, I am now in FK mode. Now let's pose this FK leg just like this. Let's switch back to IK. Let's click the IK snap, then adjust the slider to zero. And now we are back in IK. IK stretch is your on and off switch for stretching. One means it's on, zero means it's turned off. Next two options are action and clear and are used when you have a lot of poses and you want to maintain these poses and keyframes while switching between your FK and IK and vice versa. Let's quickly pose the leg with three key poses, frame number one, frame 15, and let's copy frame one onto 30. Let's hit play to see the animation play back. Basic up and down motion works just fine. Next, let's click on the FK snap, then adjust the slider to one. Next, click on the action, apply snap to keyframes under the FK snap button. Then click on the clear under the IK snap button to remove all IK keys. And now we've copied our three keys over to our FK leg. And as you can see, when I select each of these controllers, you can see the keyframes. Let's hit play to see if the animation plays and everything works and the animation has been copied. Now let's go back to IK. First, click on the IK snap. Next, adjust the slider to zero. Next, click on the action under the IK snap button. Next, click on the clear under the FK snap button to remove all FK keys. And now we've copied our three keys over to our IK leg. And as you can see with the IK controller selected, our keyframes are there. Let's play back the animation once more to see that it transferred over. And as you can see, it worked. 
Toggle pull can be used to switch between the traditional knee pull vector and a rotation. It is currently set to one. So let's press the toggle pull. It sets the value to zero. Let's go to the layers and shift click to turn on the arrow. And now you can use this to rotate. To switch back, simply click the toggle pull button again and hide your arrow in the layers menu. The apply toggle pull to keyframes option right over here can be used to copy your animation from your pull vector onto your arrow and vice versa. So let's key in three positions on the pull vector using frames number one, 15 and 30, my usual keyframes. Next, I'm gonna click the apply toggle pull to keyframes, click okay. Let's turn on the layer right over here and now our animation and keys have been copied over. Let's switch back by pressing the same option, leave the use pull vector on, Click OK. Let's hide the arrow in the layers. And, and now we are back to the traditional knee pull vector. Next, the IK parent and pull parent give you different space switching possibilities. You can click on either button to see the options in the drop down menus. Now, for this example, I've set the pull vector space to the foot. So wherever my foot goes, as you can see here, when I rotate or change position, my knee pull vector follows. Next, let's key in three poses for the foot just like this. Let's do our three favorite keyframes, number one, 15, and 30. I'm gonna press play to show you the basic animation. Now, if I select my chest control and rotate, the foot and the knee pole do not follow. But let's say I wanted the chest to drive them both. Let's use the apply switch to parent right over here. Choose the chest click OK. Same for the pull parent. Let's choose chest, click OK. Now, if I rotate my chest, it is now driving both the foot and the knee pull vector. And the last option to review is the FK limb follow. The slider is currently set to zero, which means the hips will be driving both of the legs. So let's select the hip controller and rotate. And as you can see, the legs are following the hips as I rotate. Now let's switch the slider on both of the legs to one. Let's do the other one. Now one represents world space. So now if I rotate my hips, my legs will be pointing forward, indicating world space is on. And that covers everything you need to know about the legs in both IK and FK. The blocks give you a lot of creative freedom to modify the look of your characters while keeping the rig fully intact and ready to animate. All of the geometry is editable, making it super easy and fun to come up with cool and unique styles, as you can see here with my Jordan examples, which I've created using the standard move, scale, edge tool, and subdivision modifier. Now here we have a Jordan rig that I'm transforming into a robot. I first repositioned the arms and head and next it's as simple as selecting the geo and editing it in both object and edit mode. Now this robot is probably inspired by my childhood memories, spending sleepless nights and countless hours playing one of my all time favorite video games, Mega Man on my Nintendo Entertainment System. Ah, gotta love those days. So as I wrap up this transformation, the final steps will be to scale up the hands and feet because Rigify is very cool like that. And there you have it, Jordan transformed into a robot. This concludes the overview for the Blender version of the blocks. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at watchmeanimate at gmail.com or drop a comment below with your question. Thanks again for watching and supporting me by purchasing the blocks. I hope you have a lot of fun animating them and definitely tag me on your social media if you have a cool animation to share. And on that, stay tuned for more upcoming content featuring the blocks, body mechanic rigs, made simple and fun. Ooh.